this one. I have, for a long time, pitied people who are just ordinary. The worst thing to happen to you is to be ordinary. Because there's nothing in this world that is ordinary. I was not always a Christian. I grew up in a Christian home, conversant with scriptures. I knew the Christmas carols. I sang them in the choir. I sang different parts, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. Because by virtue of my Baptist roots, I mean, singing was normal. I never took it to be anything special. When I would write songs as an unbeliever, I would use the Bible. Your eyes are like a pair of doves. You know, your hair like a flock of sheep coming out of the washing. And one of my friends just got born again recently. He said, you know, there was always something strange about you. He said, when we were high on Igbo and everything, he would open my bag and they would find a Bible at the bottom. I liked the poetry. Nobody could write a love letter like David and like Solomon. I just, I mean, who are these guys? So for a long time, I've, I've distinguished God from the music. So I'm not a gospel musician. People like the gospel music, but they don't like the God of the... It's been a long time. Which prophets found truths that were equivalent to what David found? When you read a sound, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for every situation on the sides of the north. This Mount Zion, the city of the living God. Which prophet? Isaiah would later say in chapter 2, like we heard today, that the mountain of the Lord, this guy was already talking about the mountain. And you know mountain is not a physical location. You know mountain is the, is, is the flight of the eagle. When you mount, oh my goodness. <laughs> it's motion. Who is talking about hills? That's why when he wrote his psalms at a point, he said these are songs of degrees or songs of ascent. It's a, it's a pathway you are conversant with. I'm not a pastor. I've never told any. In fact, one man went on Facebook. He saw people greeting me. Happy birthday. He said his name is Monday Abraham. I don't know him. Then he said, uh, Chris Delvan. Happy birthday and may God increase your strength and blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah. But people are calling you reverend. Why are you accepting it? I don't know what he really intended to. I said, look at these people. They are calling me reverend. One of my greatest introductions happened a few days ago. I was somewhere and they introduced everybody, archbishop, this bishop, that pastor, this apostle, that and everybody. And then they didn't introduce me on time. So I was already beginning to think, is the MC, has he forgotten me? Because I dropped my Bible, I dropped my things so that when they call me, I can get up to and do like everybody. You know, he talked about orthodoxy. Do you understand me? Consensus. So I was waiting. When they call you, Reverend Dr. Jacob Barnabas is here. Get up and wave your hand. Yeah, praise God. An apostle, principal, chief, Reverend Pastor, Akire Ledoin is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you understand me? So I dropped my luggage so that when they call me, I have free hands to... Then they didn't call me. Then at the end of the introduction, he said, and our very own. He couldn't come in September. When we called him, he said he was here. He couldn't come in March. When we called him, he said he was here. When we couldn't. Then he said, please receive Chris Delvan. He said, I, I so loved it. It's the greatest introduction. Who? Even me, I don't know what I am. No, that's the truth. An artist doesn't know who he is until he dies. Then art critics begin to critique your work. And they say, oh, this one. 
Eh, why do you want to be an apostle while you are alive? You know the way I've discovered God, Soska? You, 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 you were talking about caterpillar, pupa, imago. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, so, I didn't start like this. I've changed. I will make your name. Excuse me. It's my name that should be great. Not apostle. I'm not an apostle. Your greatest honor is for you to say Chris Delvan. The whole place erupted. And I, so people stood up from their seats to come and greet me. People who are greater than me. I mean, by the grace of God, I never reached them. Do you understand? They came to greet me. Ah, you know, we've been looking for you. It's been a long time. I say, sorry, sorry, sorry. You know me. What about? He gave some apostles. He gave some prophets. He gave some teachers, pastors, principals. Me, he gave me mouth. <laughs> I told them, he gave me what? And all of you that are my children, what do you want to get? I say, what do you want to get? And David answered Goliath and said, you come against me. Now, Mount, if that Goliath no talk, he will survive. We stood in this place. We told good luck, Jonathan. We didn't travel anywhere. We didn't use newspaper. We told them, government cannot be ne negotiating with ghosts. We don't know who Boko Haram is. They are ghosts. God is our witness. It wasn't three weeks. Good luck said it in the newspaper. But they were originally going to negotiate with Boko Haram. I said today, we know Niger Delta militants. We know Tompolo. We know Azari Dokubo. We know Osama Bin Laden. These are physical people. We know. The army knows them. They know their hometown. They are looking for them in the creeks. But we don't know Shekau. Shekau was a title. The North has not told us who is killing Nigeria. There's a conspiracy. There's no good or bad Muslim. They have conspired to hide this thing. That's what makes them completely complicit. And we don't think twice about saying it. We have influenced what government said from here. No, we have. Good luck said it. We can't negotiate with ghosts. We said it. That's the way it should be. Uh, excuse me, please. Do I look like I'm hungry? My wife is a very businesswoman. You know, very, very businesswoman. Even for high alone, we will never starve. I mean, for high alone. I mean, the kind of business I know, I can make it anywhere. If you get a bag of Igbo, Jesus. Just go by the river. You will make money. 50 liters of Ogogoro, number one. When you dilute it, it will dilute into four or five kegs. No, no, I'm not joking. Ogogoro is, is gin. You know, fantastic gin. Do you understand me? It's smooth fire. You get what I'm saying? No, 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 I'm not. You see, all the people you are honoring, all these politicians, see, they are disgracing themselves now. They said, Tinubu, this is the kind of business he did to become rich. Now he's accusing Atiku. The Atiku said he sold cars before and he says to Atiku, as a civil servant, should you have business? So you have disqualified yourself. So both of them, crooks, people sold Igbo to make it. Stop wasting your time. They sold cocaine. People who were shifting sugar, they were shifting it together with what looks like sugar. You are the most honest human beings on the earth. I told my church, look, we don't know how old this church is because we don't even know the day we started it. In this church, we don't record dates. I don't know when I got saved. People ask me, when did you get saved? So that you can say I've been a Christian for 30 something years. Then every time somebody who was a Christian six months ago talks, you say, by the grace of God, 32 years ago, 32 years ago, you are just an empty buffoon. Nothing inside. 
In fact, when was the last time you saw God? He said he does not do anything until he reveals it to his servants, the prophet. No be prophet, so is the serving prophet. Are you currently in service? That's what he's saying. Didn't you have friends last year that you told all your secrets? Are they still currently on your list? Why? You got married. Who do you tell your secrets now? Gladys. They get to hear it later. If they say why, you say to them, oh, sorry, you know, <laughs> I mean, I live in Kaduna now. You are still in Abekuta. So it's only when I get to you that I get to tell. Is he serving prophets? Check the bread, it's stale. Check the wine, it's stale. I'm a serving. No, 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 no. And prophet there is not a title. Prophet is not that you know the future. Uh -uh. Branch to Abraham said, Can I go and do something without branching to tell my friend, AB? Because I know him. He has commanded his children and his children's children's children. He has instructed them. He never born the children's children's children, no, but he instructed them the way he stands. You know that this one transgenerationally will maintain the worship of God. I can't do anything. And then why did he tell Abraham? Is it so that Abraham will write a book? No. He needed an intercessor. To save him from himself. Because he was angry. He was going to judge. But then his chief nature is mercy. So he needed somebody to talk to him about mercy. So he can cool down. If you find 40, will you spare? 40 righteous. He said, ah, I will spare now. He says, oh, he says, sorry, oh, no vex. You know, see, for Niger, the way we did do them, we say, if we get entrance, we will negotiate. So, so if you find 30, and Jesus said, okay, yeah, yeah, for 30, I will spare. And he said, excuse me, don't overvex. You know, see, I come from a Goma shop. You know, Yoruba people, when you have bargained the price, they now think, I can get something. So they come back, they say, hey, can you get 15? So Abraham was negotiating. Then finally he said, this is the last time. If you find five, my problem is, you are going to Sodom, Gomorrah, and the cities roundabout. We don't know how many cities God destroyed. And God was looking for how many? Five. But that's where Sodomy began. Homosexuality and all of that. And God was hoping to find five. In Jeremiah, he said to the prophet, run through Ariel. Ariel is the city of the king. Ari is city. El is the El Shaddai, the great God. They run through her streets. That's Jerusalem's name in the spirit. See, if there is one man, why was he looking for more people in Sodom than in Jerusalem? One righteous man. Count yourself worthy tonight that you are standing on holy ground. The ground is not holy because of anything we did. Or because of our credibility. It's holy because of the words that were spoken. The words that are spoken here, they sanctify hell. <laughs> Even hell. Even hell. Your greatest asset is your mouth. Because when you open it, Jesus comes out. It's the word of God. Warrior extraordinary. Victor par excellence, unstoppable, indescribably glorious. I don't want you to fear anything tonight. When you live here, if you are walking, walk. Anything that contends with you, speak to it. Just speak. That is your asset. This is what this house is known for. Mouth. Jesus too. Now, Jesus actually be our, our God. What was his power? What did he tell us? You will say to hey, in your mouth. 
Just hear him and repeat it. Then when the symptoms rise up, defy them and ignore them. I was listening to that girl tonight, that Wendy girl. She's a winch. Maybe the, why they called her Wendy is because they wanted to call her winch. Then they now changed it into Wendy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Tomorrow, 6 o'clock. The worship is short because the teaching service. In a teaching service, you don't sing too much. Just worship small. When the teaching has been finished, then we can worship. A believer's meeting. So if God shifted you from Gombe and is relocating you to Kaduna, don't go back. Just tell your husband. That was what Archbishop Idaosa did. He was in Oklahoma. His father in the Lord took him to the most expensive area, said to him, choose a house. And he saw one house, swimming pool outside, swimming pool inside, heated pool, everything. And Archbishop said, that's the one we want. And the man said, the ministry will pay for it. You're not paying a dime. No loan. Nothing. Archbishop said, as he was leaving the house, telling himself, man, ministry is good. God said to him, where? You are not staying here. Go back to Benin or I will kill you. He went and met his wife. I mean, he first told his spiritual father, sir, the one who called me said, that one said, no, 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 no. Benson, we're going to pay for it debt free. <laughs> So he went to Daisy Osborne and said to her, I told Papa what God said. Then she also said to him, but Benson, America needs you. The world needs you. We're going to project your ministry from here to Africa, to Benin. <laughs> I told you his story now. He said he woke up wanting to speak like an American. He said, Jesus, I'll give you praise now. Bless your name. And the Lord was asking the angels, who is that? <laughs> because the Lord didn't know him. He said, so I give you praise and I thank you, Lord. The Lord says, I said, who is that? So Gabriel and Michael were looking. So when Benson understood, he said, Father. God said, that's Benson. <laughs> You can't change your phone because you want to impress God. Tell him, Father. Namio. Nahingo, tell the angels, your boy, Jonathan, don't wake up, but we're in trouble. We better answer him. So he now went to his wife, Dr. Margaret Idahosa. That's how he calls his wife, calls her with respect. She said, yes. He told her, he said, that house, if we enter it, God's going to kill us. He has told me to head for Benin. As you see me like this, now go I day. Are you coming with me or you are staying with your father? She said, no. He should go and ask God. Oh, how can God promise you a land flowing with milk and honey and take it away from you? So she went to the bedroom and even changed. Archbishop didn't enter the house. Went out, took a taxi and got to the airport. When he landed in New York from Oklahoma, he called them and told them, I'm already checking in for the Nigerian flight. Then he told Margaret, you can marry my father and mother and live in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm going to obey God. That's how he came to Benin. And the Lord said to him, I raise you as a light to Africa. From Benin, I was in the Gambia with him when Archbishop died. And I was on my way back on a flight. And the Bellevue flight flew to Liberia, flew everywhere and was packing people. Everybody that entered the aircraft, they were pastors. And they were all talking about going to Papa. And I was wondering what was happening. I had not heard the news. So finally I asked one Liberian what was happening. He said, oh, they are going for the burial. I said, burial of who? He said, Archbishop Idahosa. I said, why? 
he said to me that he took a lorry from Liberia and hitchhiked. You know, hitchhiking, you take a lorry to Kano, then you drop because the lorry has stopped its travel, their journey there. Then you now begin to trek, you get keke. That's how he kept moving, coming to Benin City from Monrovia. He had been born again with bathroom slippers. The Lord told him, go to your father, go to Benin. There will I train you for the ministry. And when he knocked on the door, Archbishop opened the door and said, what is your name? He told Archbishop his name. What are you doing here? He said, I came from Liberia. God sent me to come and study and learn about God. Archbishop shouted, Margaret, you have another son. He said, enter. Everybody told the same story. Senegal, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Cote d'Ivoire. They were all coming to Benin. What kind of man is that? Everybody called him Papa. I will make your name great. Make your name great. And we're in this city. If people think I'm proud because of the songs we have sung. Somebody wanted to discredit me. I started laughing. You can't discredit this thing. You don't even know the path of the ego. How do you get there to scatter it? How? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> what you see? How can you walk when you don't know the way? Somebody thinks it's poetry. Okay, write it. <laughs> write another one. Uh, eh? This man, when I went to his country, they were maybe 94, 95% Muslim. This man sat down, did crossover speech. Then the president of the country the next day was addressing State of the Union address, talking to the nation, and is copying two paragraphs from the pastor that spoke in the midnight. Meanwhile, he's an occultist. People where they walk out with tortoise and snake and chameleon inside the Agbada. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's quoting pastor to address the nation. Do you need to put apostle to his name? Uh, the, this, the, who is the president? A few days ago, my son was made a general. So I went to greet them in Lagos. And his wife was there with him and the children. So I said, oh God, you don't become general. Lou. Then she said, yes, he's the general of the Nigerian army. But I'm the general of the general. <laughs> and the man smiled. The man said, stop that thing. She said, eh? He said, eh, I will serve the punishment when we get home. <laughs> so he said, no, say punishment day. Because the, the wife, now the real officer. The, am I the senior pastor of this church? Is he not my wife? Can I order you the way she will order you? You know, since she don't come out, that's why they talk about her. Now. Even as she did for you, and I respect myself and just cool down. You understand? You know why Goliath died? Because David looked like his wife. The same size. The sound of the voice. As Goliath be greet like that, the only thing they frighten her now in wife. Goli? 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 Yeah, baby, which one? Uh, which one? Take it easy. How many times did I call your name? <laughs> if, if you don't just provoke me, you I'm warning you for the last time. If not the thing I will do for you. And he said, baby, baby, take it easy now. Take it easy. So when David came and David said, Golly, you come against me. <laughs> Golad gave up the ghost before the stone came because he thought it's his wife. <laughs> Why is she siding with the Jews? <laughs> I don't know. Do you get what I'm saying? We're releasing a deadlier generation. Pastor Forbes. Everything. That's all they call him in the country. Pastor Forbes. Pastor Forbes. In fact, a Muslim flew with me the last time I went to the Gambia. He works with uh, Echoas. He's a director. Give me his card. When I said to him I was going to Pastor Forbes, he said to me that his mother... I said, my mother, 
man. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we used to call her. He said she was his teacher. Then he said to me, you know in the Gambia, we didn't know the name pastor until he returned from Nigeria. That's how the Gambia knew the word pastor with Pastor Forbes. So we'll enter supermarket and the boys with dreadlocks, they'll be shouting, Pastor Forbes, Pastor Forbes. And then they like reggae. So when I sang Go Be Bold, oh my God, the guys like me, Chris. And then I went, unfortunately, on national television. I said, oh, all of you call my name, say DV. Say it now. I said, yeah, man. How are you guys, man? So the guys like it. Anywhere there's any DV. I heard say little rascals. When I come to Jesus. Yeah, that, that was it. That was it. So you live in safety in the midst of trouble. But don't you know that David was allocated a city called Ziklag by the Philistines? Ah, no be, no be. Cockatrice then, no be Wahala. Isaiah prophesied that a lad will play at the den of the cockatrice. They will hang out together. We have done things though. Somebody told me that, we, that I overwork. That's why I'm sick. I said, I'm not sick. God withdrew me to go and rest. I'm deadlier now than before. And I'm coming back home. In fact, I'm not coming back. I'm back. I'm back. These are people that labored. Have you ever walked and lost all your main men at the same time? If you never suffer that kind of loss, you don't know anything. There are people do. To be alone is not a problem. In fact, before Butterfly become Butterfly, he must have become Solomon. A solo man. That's the meaning of Solomon. He must love soloism. Because you don't, nobody they hail you, nobody they pre praise you, nobody they celebrate anything where you talk. Somebody asked me that well, why are we not putting pictures of the killings in social media? I said, if now your mama they kill, you go snap her put for social media. Because you are living in Lagos, you want me to put the picture of my aunt, of my cousin's wife, who was butchered. Because of how, how much do you have? Your money perish with you, devil like you. Nonsense. One man had the guts to tell me that. You know, now, now we did support doing Akirele. When he misbehaved, I withdrew my support. That's why he's suffering. That's the last time he saw me. You withdrew your support. You don't know my father, Abraham. He looked king. He said, I lifted up my hand to the God of heaven. And I swore, I will not give anybody the opportunity to say he made Abraham rich. All of you are rich. None of you is poor. Today, I break the power of hunger. I said I break the power of hunger. You know how that spirit operates? Because of hunger and because of what somebody can do for you, you begin to be stammering when you should be talking straight. Uh, so, 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 now, so, 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 now, so, 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 I curse stammering. The only thing that can make you stammer is an encounter with God. Moses was not a stammerer. He told God, he said, since the day you spoke to me, I have not been able to speak well. He was not born a stammerer. It is God's speakings that discombobulates and discomfits and harasses. Somebody said, eh, I don't believe him in, in prosperity. And he's not half as rich as me. Your riches is not what you have, Elsie. It's what you can do. That's your real riches. I've landed countries nobody invited. I, in fact, I don't need invitation. Me, I created every door. I sang it from here. I'm starting from my home. Among my people and in my country. Till I reach the ends of the... I knew of Gambia, but I delayed it. I only walked in Kaduna. There's no corner of Kaduna, Tudumwada, Express, everywhere. I entered churches that were eight people, ten people, fifteen people to sell cassette. When I finished, then I looked, lifted up my head and I went to Joss. And the Lord said, my wife is alive. 
She, she, every day she borrows me money. She lends me money to go to Joss to pray. Because when he says to me, come up to the mountain, I asked him, where is the mountain? It was Joss. And every day I return, she will ask me, how about, how was the ministry? I say, fine. But what she's asking me is, you have not paid back the money. Uh, and that's the truth. Then I went to Kano. Then I began to go to Bauchi, Awala, Zaranda Hotel. And then I went to Abuja. <laughs> First time I entered Dunamis. The church wasn't up to two months old. The wife had told an answer. So you said there are people that must speak into the foundation of this ministry. I heard one of them at the Sheraton. And he invited me. And what Soska was describing happened. I entered the place with my five-year-old Joel, or six years old. And he said, um, it's, it's, it was midnight, all night, around 10.30. He said, I, my wife says to me, that is our guest minister. I've never met him. And no pastor in his right senses does that. And he said, and they told me you don't give him time or title. So, okay, here is the microphone. Whenever you finish. I finish 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> and I handed the microphone to him and we left. They wanted to give me money. I said, young man like you and your wife, they want to give me 5000 For what? It cost us only 300 naira to come from Kaduna, me and my son. I said, please put the money in the ministry. Because they were renting it, a small room. I can see the crowd. We have a healthy relationship. I've never even gone to the dome to minister yet. Because God wind me of selling 1,000 cassettes from day one. It never happens. I went to Shiloh. I ministered. We took Ghana must go full of cassette. We didn't come back with cardboard. We didn't see the cassette. We didn't see the money. And I'm not laughing at the ministry. That's my father's house. We've never done what we do for food. That's never worked. Now nah, he did. How many times did we meet on the road with you guys? We met them on the road. They had a big ministry, good ministry. They will get paid for everything. And sometimes when we meet them, we even bail them. Hey guys, you want to come? We'll go chop. Because they never chop. So we go, oh, this, this hoopla about nothing. Listen, this is the generation that will save this country. A generation that you cannot pay. A generation that have mastered hunger. No, no, I'm not joking. If you open my, if you can steal my phone, the kind of names you will see, and they are current phone numbers. There was a bishop that would change, he has seven numbers per time. He changes them every two weeks. And he told me himself for security reasons. And I agree with him. Because when you are flying a helicopter to your church, I mean, you know? And every time he changes the numbers, I will get the current number I can reach him by out of the seven. And the last time I stood on his pulpit was 2000. <laughs> 2000. That's how we... You shape destiny. This destiny helper. You can never hear me pray that prayer. I told you a few weeks ago, don't ever pray the prayer of Jabez. Oh Lord, bless me. What happened to you? That God will bless you. What happened to you? Ephesians chapter 1 they say he has blessed you with every spirit. <laughs> Why are you saying, no Lord, bless me? Something is wrong with you if you have a prayer request tonight. I change your direction. From the file of prayer request, you are prayer answered. So fill up your mouth with praise. Don't ever get up again. If you borrow money and you cannot pay, it's not a prayer request. Don't go and disturb God. Uh, uh, Lord, they are coming to collect their money. No, the Bible told you what to do. Speak to the person where you borrow the money from. Before he hand you over to the judge. The judge hand you over to police. They send you to prison. So the diplomacy of wealth requires that you know how to negotiate yourself out of trouble. You get what I'm saying? Negotiate. Your gift is what? Mouth. Okay? I'm sorry. I was hoping to pay my money by this time. You're not the first to be in debt. Don't let anybody deceive you. A Christian. A, ah! A 
Christians should not owe anybody. It's a lie. It's not in the scripture. Jesus owed the government. Jesus owed the government. Stand up, sir. That was how Jesus was. They came and said to him, Oga, you never pay temple tax. Shebi is a preacher. Shouldn't he pay for the temple? Now, not be government tax. So the people are wicked. Temple what? And Jesus said it's true. And Jesus knew that it's not only him. Even Peter, where they with him, they never pay. Now Jesus said, Peter, don't catch fish again. I'll make you a fisher of men. But that day he said to him, where is your kugia? Where is your kugia? Go and look for it. The first thing you catch, not the second, not the tenth. Don't buy a crowd of fish to go and sell. The first one. It has the answer. The beginning. Whatever you get from the ATM first. Peter caught the fish. And they told him, cut it open. The fish itself is not the value. You, you, if you get fish, you go even eat the fish, swallow the ring. The gold ring with the inside, you go swallow and with the fish. Because you think that the fish is the real thing. They cut it open, found a gold ring, and sold it. And it paid for Jesus and Piro and then extra. And I guess that Jesus was talking like I'm talking while Peter went looking for the fish. And so, when God comes into your situation, and people were just waiting, when you finish, we will see how, if you don't pay that tax today. Immediately, Peter came back and they paid. Jesus said, the sermon is ended. They said, ah, well. <laughs> you have to be wise. The dark places of the earth, they are haunts of cruelty. Don't trust the world. Nobody can harass me. Nobody, nobody, nobody. You call me thief, I ask you, I thief your thing. If I don't thief your thing, please leave me alone. After all, in government, you are not a thief until you are caught. So the real thing is make sure you are not caught. Eh? So, I told you before that you keep a good name. Because the time is coming and now the time has come. Political parties will not get candidates again. Because nobody get good name. See how obedient they suffer these old people. Just the only thing you get now be say what? You get name. I told them. I told you. Didn't I tell you? I told you here now. Hang out with me. Just keep a good name, Aide. Political party will soon come and tell you, you know, for Boko East Senatorial District, they don't get candidates. Borrow us your name. If you if you tell them you don't get money for campaign, they will say we have it. If you tell them, say, you don't know INEC and how to buy them, say, we know them. If you tell them, say, you don't know police, they'll tell you police is in our pocket. Just borrow us your name. That's all you have. Your name. And you know what? Whenever you are considering your name, don't be thinking about how many sins you committed. That's not how God calls the righteous or the ungodly. God doesn't call you clean, Jonathan, because you don't have a spot. No, what makes you righteous is that you know where to repent. To. Your repentance is your key in God's sight. Don't keep a short record with God. Daddy, I'm sorry. I'm not going back there again. That's all. You are back in the good books. Because his righteousness is a free gift and is eternal. Now I'm saying this because of those who will be listening later on social media. Most people walk around condemned. Jesus is not a ministry of condemnation. He commends you to the grace of God. Hallelujah. If you are not repentant, that's where your wahala begins. But as somebody will tell you, it's not borrowed. They say Dangote is the richest man. Is he rich? Is he rich? How much does he have? He's not as rich as this ministry. Because he can't sleep with his eyes closed. He sleeps with one eye closed. Because his creditors or the people following him money, they are by the door. Five banks gave him $50 million loan. Five banks in Nigeria. Is he rich? Is a debt. How much is the interest alone? Then they declare you the richest man. Do you know, nobody owns an aeroplane. 
you lease it and pay for it daily. Oil companies give you fuel, but you pay at the end of the day. Do you understand me? Pilots. It's only pastors that buy aeroplane. Because the ministry of Jesus is the, is the only prosperous enterprise in heaven and on earth. Even me now, we are buying a Cessna. I told them we are opening the Kaguro Aerodrome. What nonsense. I need a Cessna here. My son says he wants to be a pilot. Why will he be a pilot for nothing? I beg. I need a small Cessna. We are going to tar the, the tarmac. It's an aerodrome. It just has orange uh, t-shirt like that man. When the wind blows, at least you can see where the thing is. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's going to take me three hours to get to Lagos, but at least I go land, they go say, I come with my jet. <laughs> and I thought it's very expensive, but my son told me the price. I opened uh, this thing to see the prices of those things. Oh, I'd be like, can I pay? Okay, very soon now you will see our television legacy tv we have got the license the president has approved my license i know i'm not sure whether i ain't see the name <laughs> because my mouth is a big problem legacy radio and television some of you will come and walk i told you you didn't enter there carelessly tonight when i heard wendy and I heard what Josh said yesterday. And I heard my friend speaking today. I just knew it. That some of you have relocated permanently. I'm telling you, in this place, the accuracy is too much. See, the last thing he was talking about, they told Cornelius, send to Joppa by the seaside. There is there's one Peter, I mean Simon, whose house is by the sea, is a tanner. But not that Simon. There's another Simon whose surname is Peter. What kind of accuracy is that? Meanwhile, Cornelius was asking for nothing. What they were even about to show him is impossible to ask for. How do you ask for the Gentiles to come into the commonwealth of Israel? Who gave you that kind of sight? So he didn't ask for it. He said, your arms have come up to God for a memorial. Some of you think you are drug addicts. It's a lie. That's the uniform Satan gave you. You are marching to school. Change that uniform tonight. You're no more a drug addict. Drugs, you don't need rehab to be okay. I met Jesus. He took it away. I said he took it. He's the only one I know that can remove leprosy like shit. He took it. That Just like that. There's no back on back on with him. He just pulled leprosy from somebody's body. And everybody is looking for where he hung it. They can't see it. But we saw him removing it. That's how he removes blindness. Don't get out of this place and light your small spliff. And say, you know, my problem is this. It's not your problem. You are the, the, you are the problem of the thing. Some of us, we are not possessed by demons. Now we, they possess the demons. So when we, they pray, the demons, they tell God, now lie, you. now he possess me. <laughs> Every time they cast me out, they run, he will follow me, catch me. <laughs> you are the demon possessor. In Nigeria, nobody is a drug addict. Nobody is a sex addict. Nobody is a loony. It's a lie. Release it. Take Jesus' salvation. That's the only reason why you won't make heaven if you reject the free gift of God. It's the way out. Let's do it again. And let's do what? That's Christmas. Thank you for the encounter, Pastor Forbes. Thank you. We bless you. Josh, thank you. Thank you for the encounter. Thank you. Wendy, thank you. Thank you. He's tattooed from head to toe. White man. And that's the first time I heard a white man say, I come from five generations of witches. 
He said his grandmother used to wake up and say that nobody has cried in this area for one week. So she will get out of the, to the road and then trek back into the house and somebody will die in the street. He's an evangelist. He's coming. He told me, I've got to come to Kaduna. I like you. Then he received Christ. He said, no church can survive in Baika. He said, but when I saw Banjo and his little band of prayer people, Banjo came to Newcastle. God told him, don't start church. Be praying at junctions. So they will sit down. I am in that number. I am in that number. Nigerian choruses. Then they will be praying on the road. That's how they bought a property in Baika. And church started. I went there. <laughs> you are the one going to take the world for Jesus. No nation. Americans cannot change the world. It's Nigerians. We are, we are born for it. We are crooks by nature. We survive crookedly. And we are blenders. Now we be the real chameleon. You put a Nigerian in China, you soon hear him. Send a Nigerian to Gambia, they are a problem. Everywhere. His pastor, Mr. Mesa Bill said, he wish they can draw Nigerian blood in syringe and pump a little in every African so that Africans can become alive. My friend went to Uganda, <laughs> Kampala. He got to a shop. I was shouting, hello, hello. Anybody here? Nobody answered. And everything is there. Sweet. Cigar <laughs> in Nigeria. Even Muslim Malam, when he's praying, he looks at his goods. Allah Akbar. He's looking there to be sure nobody touches. <laughs> After about 30 minutes, somebody now said, um. So he looked and saw a man sleeping there. I said, I've been shouting since you know, go answer. The man said, He's on break. And the guy told us, if you're on break like this in Nigeria, you're not going to see shop. <laughs> you and the shop, they go skyway you. Ah, your family will pay ransom. I went to French West Africa. Somebody misbehaved in traffic. Do you know Gendarme took whistle? Pee! All the cars parked. And they went and caught the I said in Nigeria, you blow whistle. So people go back. Then you can select the person where you want. Not, not in Nigeria. Lagos. Lagos, there's no even direction. Everybody is going everywhere at the same time. Ah. One man came from Canada. He said he's an African. He said he's an African. Me, I was telling he's a pastor. I said, no, you are a Canadian. No. He said he's an African. He said, he said, oh my God, look at how many black people. I've never seen this many black people. Oh, I'm home. I'm home. He meet me, he said, brother. He meet another, my brother. He meet another one, brother. By the time he returned from evening service, they had collected his passport, collected his money in Sheraton. Not Sharp Corner Hotel, Sheraton. Immediately. <laughs> They stole everything. Then the manager came and was saying to him, we are sorry, we are investigating. He said, no, I want to go home. <laughs> ah! He said, you want to go home? I said, no, you are in Africa, you are home. <laughs> you are my brother. That's you don't get sense. You go get out for here. You get out for here. Obama become president. They said the first black president. You know Greek or Nigeria? He said, no, we think will happen. Wise man. That's the only wisdom Obama has. He avoided Nigeria. If not, every other thing here is now buffoonism. Uh, uh, see how immigrants are trekking into America now. 
Eh? Eh, the country no even get border. You no get fence. You no get gate. You no get door. You don't need visa. Just go and join the queue. <laughs> America don't call you. If God doesn't help America, America is finished. And the only reason why America will survive is the sacrifices of her fathers. I'm telling you now, mark my words. But this generation of children don't deserve anything from God. And tonight God told me as my friend was ministering that this is a sacrificial meeting. This meeting is a sacrifice. And God is receiving it. And he's going to reward this nation because of that. I'm telling you, it's a sacrifice. In this time, you don't hear this kind of sound. Tune to the airwaves. You just hear all kinds of silly talk. Uh, oh, Lord, the Lord will do it for you. You see testimonies. She prayed for me. And that month, he came. What is he came? You want not marry. You want not marry. They tell you, say, Jesus, don't come. You say you want not marry. So if you have four more years and you marry and Jesus come in four years, then you push belly and say you don't pregnant. Now like that, you go enter heaven. Do you understand what I'm saying? People are thinking deep. I was listening to some commentary. The river Euphrates is dry. And Revelation said that river will dry up. 200 million soldiers will march across to go and attack Israel. You are still sitting down. Saying that God should answer your prayer. Prayer for what? For man. You are suffering from menopause. Men disease. So tonight. This is menopause now. Now men disease now. You are now men. Men. You just, just they look men. Menopause. Menopause. They go pause you. Something else is bubbling on the ground. I know the ground is shaking. I heard it tonight. I, I, he didn't just say it. I heard it. It's on my legs. And the girl first said it. She said, the Holy Ghost is enveloping some of your feet. Did you hear her? A man came to marry a few Saturdays ago. And I met him in my office in the night. And I sat there and I said to Pastor Fash, my feet are vibrating. The anointing is heavy in this place. Then I asked the guy a simple question. How did you meet the girl? He said, um, I think, let me see, I think you are talking to me. So I asked him, how did you conspire against the Holy Spirit to walk in here and not discern the atmosphere? Yes, I'm sitting, the ground is shaking. His friend, <laughs> I don't want to disgrace anybody, stretched out on the floor. Deliverances were happening there. Then he was struggling, breaking forth in tongues. The groom, Papa, was on the floor in tears. I said, do I look like a joker? It's 11 o'clock. My wife is on the bed at home waiting for me. I created time to talk to you and you didn't even discern that God is here. You are, you are sick. I said, from your tribe, we're not up to 100,000. See the way they are killing us. You are our last hope. You are a lawyer. You know, you, I'm asking you, when did you meet your, you are taking me to, for granted to be your friend. I know you those kind of pastors. We now started ministering to them to get them to calm down accurately so that we can go home. After some time, I even left them with the pastors. Everybody came out praying. This 11 in the night here. We were to do the wedding in the morning. I entered, had a bath, dressed up, came out, passed them, and I said, I'm going home. I have to go now. And the next day, we came for the wedding, and he came back and said he wants to bless God. I said, yeah. He told the girl. The girl wasn't there. He told her the stories of what happened, and her life just exploded. I said, that's the way it's supposed to be. So, so, so you guys, you are going to carry a deadlier dimension. The deadlier dimension of that grace. Josh said yesterday that he's waiting to receive. I said to him, no, you will pour. But I sat today. I answered him in prayer. I told God, so let him receive hope. Because he cannot go out of this place the same way he came. Uh, if you pour out, you should be poured into. So 
So Josh, we bless you. When you go, you become deadlier. You'll be like a saber. Just be cutting through it. Two-edged sword. And I told you, Wendy, there are promises that God made to you, prophecies, they will fulfill here. Yeah. You'll meet people here who will change the course of your ministry. Provision. I heard that. Provision. This country is rich. Yeah. And the people are rich givers. They push ministry. And they will do it for you. Then you you'll hear the word of God. You see it come to pass. And our joy will be full. I love you all. God bless you. So tonight we'll give an offering. And then um, tomorrow you get ready to give a proper offering. Tonight whatever you wanted to give to God, give to God. And, um, but tomorrow you come to give. We want to bless these people that came. We want to send them off properly. We're not many but the things we can do, hi. Anybody underestimate us, you mess up. So we'll take an offering, and then once, once we finish, you can, you can go off. Uh, Akele, come and pray for the offering. No do, brother Alex, prayer. Alex. They told Alex to pray for the offering. He didn't even give any money. His shoes were like this. <laughs>